Referee Mark Goddard about to get this one underway. Our featured preliminary bout in association with Apex Fight, where Steve Diddy Kong, aimable in the multicolored camo, Perry the Predator Goodwin in the tartan. Buffalo, Buffalo, uh, Buffalo check is the technical technical name for that particular pattern. Julie knows it. Aimable taking centre of the cage here, but good win. Looking to do damage with those leg kicks early. Yeah, coming up very aggressive is uh, Perry Goodwin. You know, good win with a, a bit of a mixed record, but he's only been in there against top competition. His style in the past has led to him leaving himself open, but he's an all-action fighter, and in the past couple of years, he seems to be really putting it together, Dan. And if the time is right to make a run at the Cage Warriors featherweight belt, he's dropped down to this division. He's looked better than ever, to be fair. That time certainly is now. Yeah, he looks big for the division as well. Of course, we talked about it during the walkouts there is brawl with Reese McKee, who's now the de facto number one contender at welterweight. Two nice, uh, weight divisions between them now. And Goodwin took some heavy, heavy shots off McKee in that fight and handed out a fair few of his own. Goodwin, of course, based in uh, Redcar, North Yorkshire, so a fairly short trip, shorter than it would have been had he had to, to go down to London. Steve Aimable, conversely, coming up from Harlow and Essex. Both these guys have been around the circuit for many years, though no strangers to travelling. Yeah, Steve seems to be really uh, taking his time, picking his shots carefully, some really nice leg kicks. Uh, looking very composed in there. Perry definitely coming out a lot more aggressive. Yeah, Aimable's one of those guys who's just... You know, there really aren't any weaknesses in his game. He's got good wrestling, he's got good jiu-jitsu, his boxing is good. Oh, takes an uppercut from Goodwin there, though, and he's got a hell of a chin on him. And you only need to watch that Matt Bunnell fight. You know, by the end of that fight, his face looks like a car crash, but he took all those shots and he kept coming forward. Don't forget, we are just over half an hour away from our main card live on UFC Fight Pass Cage Warriors 113. The return of Paddy the Baddy, Mason Jones versus Joe McColgan for the belt. And for the first time ever, two UFC fighters in a Cage Warriors cage. Darren Stewart versus Bartos. Verbinski, that's all coming up at the top of the hour, live and exclusive to the good folks at UFC Fight Pass. I just mentioned like how incredible this show has been so far. Like every single fight has been absolutely amazing. Good, we're looking to wind up that uppercut. One of his favorite shots. Oh, he catches Aimable with it there. Yeah, he's having a lot of success with that. That lead right uppercut. He's having fun in there, you can tell. Aimable needs to get out of first gear here. Yeah, two very different styles. Perry's coming in very aggressive. He's mixing it up. He's throwing a lot of big strikes. Not, not connecting with a lot of them, but he's throwing these strikes. Whereas Steve is very composed. He's not getting rolled up. He's not, he's not you know, taking the bait. And he's just looking to have uh, precision and uh, carefully planting those strikes. Aimable looking to find a home for that jab. And Goodwin looking to loop shots around it. Lots of feints and flicks from Goodwin here as well. He's flicking those hips out, trying to catch Steve Emerald off guard, trying to get a reaction out of his opponent. Steve charging in. Really, really the most aggressive he's looked using that uh, combination to set up a takedown. Terry doing a good job of stuffing the head. You keep that head low, it becomes very difficult to influence the upper body and influence the hips in particular. Fighting the stand back up here, but Steve doing a great job. Looking to take the back off of this. 26 seconds left. It's not really long enough to do anything on the ground from here. He's probably better off throwing a few strikes and just really putting an explanation point at the end of this round. 
Terry shakes his head there. With 10 seconds left, you're really not concerned with any sort of grappling exchange. But interesting to see whether Steve uses a similar strategy maybe earlier on in the second round. Yeah. Both men staying aggressive through the bell. That's what we like to see. Yeah, and a solid first round from both guys, but Perry Goodwin is the fighter that got out of first gear. For me, landing the better strikes, and I'm sure we'll be able to take a look back at some of that action. Yeah, there's a real contrast in styles, and if you just look at the mannerisms and the way that each fight is carrying themselves, Perry's really coming out aggressively and looking to push the pace. Steve's taking his time and looking to the opening. So we see here, uh, he, he shot the takedown. It's very, it is very late in the round to have shot a takedown. It's going to be a lot of energy ex uh, expenditure. Maybe he thought that the round is so close at that point that with a, a, a bit of a grappling exchange in his favor, it could push it uh, to the judges to give him the nod for that round. Who knows? Steve Amable looking very calm and collected in the corner there. Head coach of PKK fighters, Jack Mason and Nick Alper, their wrestling coach in there, giving him some instructions between rounds. Yeah, we've seen Amabel do really well with his double leg takedowns before, so it'll be interesting to see when that particular tool comes out of the bag for the man from Harlow and Essex. Best believe that Goodwin will be more than happy to slug it out in the feet for as long as it stays there. And this is a better start from Amable, coming out a bit more aggressive here. Absolutely, you can see that instantly. He has a very, you know, and, and sometimes that's part of the game plan, that you're going to come out, you're going to fill your opponent out for the first round, especially if they're a big heavy hitter like Perry is, you're going to let him get a little bit tired, and then you're going to turn it on in the second round. Whereas it looked like Perry was coming out to finish this fight early. You see that reaction? It's, it's always a big telltale sign. If you land a strike, be it a punch to the face, a kick to the legs, and your opponent reacts, they shake their head, they smile, you're better off doing nothing. You know, when you, whenever you react, it's a little bit of a tell you can get a read on your opponent. Look at that. Shot drops Goodwin to the scene of his pants. It was a straight left hand. Aimable looking at pounce here. Goodwin appears to be rocked. Yeah, that was a beautifully timed shot straight down the middle and really taking advantage now. You saw him just go from, you know, sort of second gear immediately into full throttle trying to finish this match. And that's going to give Steve Aimable a world of confidence. Goodwin looks to have his wits back about him, though. Goodwin firing back with a one-two again, trying to tee up that right uppercut. That's one of his favorite shots. Yeah, the corner of Goodwin shouting for the fakes, shouting for the faints. Those leg kicks uh, from, from Steve are definitely adding up there. Goodwin trying to find a home for the right hand there. Aimable marching forward though, looking a lot more confident in this second frame. Bigger, bigger reactions every time to those leg kicks. Let's go. And the Japs, come on. The Japs are lovely. Little bit of wind out of the sails of Goodwin here, perhaps. Absolutely. He's had pretty really high output from the beginning, so there's no surprise. Uh, Steve, Steve's definitely been measuring his output a lot more, uh, uh, a lot more conservatively than Perry has been. If this goes to the third round, I think that's going to show even more. That's a big if. Aimable trying to find the way in here. He's still coming behind that left jab. It's a better round for Aimable, but Goodwin's still very much in it. And a couple of big shots could yet turn the tide. That was a nice right hand from Goodwin. Aimable still marching forward. Goodwin trying to tee up a big shot. Yeah, Perry's still looking super dangerous here. <laughs> like he's still throwing with a lot of power. Big body shot there from Goodwin. 
one of these gets through, this could turn the tide of this uh, fight completely. Oh, we're looking for the flying knee. Aimable catches him and drives him into the mat. Yeah, that's the problem. When you, when both your feet leave the ground at the same time, it becomes very easy to influence your momentum through the air. So just a really nicely timed shot, very fast uh, into the butterfly guard. Again, we end up on the ground with not that much time to go. It's going to be interesting to see what Perry does defensively, uh, but more interesting to see what Steve does offensively. Because right now, you know, hands on the biceps, you know, this isn't a particularly uh, ag aggressive strategy from him. Well, let's take a listen in if we can to the red corner of Steve Aimable. Watch this butterfly guard, shut it down. Keep your hips nice and low. You know, uh, Perry, Perry doesn't really have any upper body control, which means you can't, you can't really do anything from here. I, I'd expect to see Steve be a little bit more aggressive from on top. Can't really allowing Perry to take the close guard. Uh, if you're looking to pass the guard, it's not a particularly good option to allow your opponent to take a close guard position. And up right here with the head down, <laughs> Very interesting strategy. Uh, Perry looking to cut the angle to attack the armbar there. Steve picks him up, carries him a little bit, drops him down. It looks good, um, but it's really high output and it doesn't really achieve much. And the corner saying to Aimable, you've cut him wide open. A good win with a big cut there. It looks like it may be over the eye. Yeah, so, so it could be the strategy there was to put Perry in the corner and then basically trap his head uh, against the cage to give him a better target to strike. It's Look, just not a Perry Gibbon fight unless someone's bleeding all over the cage. Look, as long as no blood goes on that beautiful moustache, I'm going to be okay, okay? Just keep it, direct it away from that moustache. That's my only request. And that, that cut seems to be, yeah, it's right over the right eye. But let's take a look at some of the action from that second round. And that was a beautiful left jab, and he walked straight onto that Yeah, one. he walked into it, exactly. It doubles the power. But didn't go out. He was immediately kicking backwards. It looked like he was, he was trying to create space as he went down. And some of the follow-up shots there, straight to the chin for Aimable. Catches the flying knee attempt, drives Goodwin into the mat. And this was the start of a period of concerted control from Steve Aimable. Yeah, I'd really like to see a little... Uh, I'd like to see this match go to the ground earlier and have a look at what both fighters can do from there because I was actually getting quite excited to see um, uh, Perry work in that close guard position off his back and see what strategy Steve had from on top. Let's go, let's go. Third and final round underway. Show of respect between these two fighters. Now is Goodwin going to come out like a house of fire in this third round? Is he going to cut over the eye? No, he's going to come out. He's going to try and knock him out. More to the point, we're, we're pretty much clearly one round apiece here, right? So third round, everything's to play for. I think. Uh, I think. I'd agree with you there. You, you can't be sure with that first round, but I think I'd have to. I'd have to say just the pure aggression um, that I give that first round to Perry. Well, we are not judges. We have three great ones around Cage yes. side to do that for us. We'll just sit back and enjoy the action, and we hope you at home are too and join the action live on UFC Fight Pass. Cage Warriors 1-1-3 one, one, live from Manchester. Nice. nice combination there from Goodwin. I'm really impressed with Perry being able to keep up this high energy output, uh, even as we go into the third round here. His conditioning must be spot on. There's the uppercut from Goodwin. It looks nasty, doesn't it? You don't, you don't want to be on the end of that uppercut. Still thrown with a lot of power here. And actually seeming a lot more accurate than he has been in the last two rounds. Definitely got a lot in the tank. That's Goodwin. And this will be such an important victory for Goodwin. Such an important victory for both guys in terms of their standing in this division. There's the jab again from Aimable. Almost all his striking has come from behind that jab. Goodwin, though, firing in a good few shots of his own there. Oh, there's the oh, my. again. Huge shot. Aimable takes it on the chin and marches forward. Completely different striking than we saw in the first couple of rounds. Those first two rounds, Perry throwing a lot of big strikes, none of them landing. Suddenly, every single strike that he throws now, he's really found his range here. 
Good win. Dancing on his tiptoes, but clubbing away with his fists. Aimable landing a two-piece. Goodwin smiles back. Aimable wades forward. Looking for a takedown here, but Goodwin looking for a guillotine. Arm, arming guillotine here. The head looks like it's going to pop out. Yeah, this is the wrist. An arming guillotine from close guard. Very, very difficult to get, especially, uh, you know, halfway through the final round of a fight. A good work by Goodwin there to get back to his feet. He circles out. And that blood is really flowing into the eye now of Goodwin. Be interesting to see if it affects his vision at all in the last two and a half minutes of this round. Oh, Goodwin gets caught with a right hand there. And another aimable marching forward. He's going for guillotine again. Yeah, he wants to get that right hand underhooking on the same side and lift up. He wants to get underneath his opponent. Uh, because from here, this is not a great position. He's going to look to grab onto that single leg and drag him down. Or, wow, high crotch straight into the air. Plants him back down. Perry doing a great job of popping straight back up to the feet, but this is not where he wants to be. He wants to strike. He wants to create distance. Steve doing a great job of grinding him up against the fence here. Aimable looking to take over the later portions of this fight. Another single leg attempt. Perry wants to be circling off the cage here, or even he wants to take that opposite side hand, bring it round to the opposite side leg, and hit a switch from here which we're kind of a, possibly about to see but as we do that Steve comes round to the back and this is a position you really don't want to be in final minute of the round and the fight Steve Aimable wearing on Perry Goodwin here against the side of the cage this is a vital minute in this fight I really feel like it's everything to play for if he can create some space look how much effort Steve's putting into that grappling exchange there Right now, there's a minute to go, and anyone can win this fight. Look for Goodwin to come charging forward here, looking for the kill. Big shots. Oh, beautiful. Where's he getting his energy from in the last 30 seconds of the fight? Being able to do a, a, a blast double running through there. Gary fighting back to his feet again. Incredible stuff from the man from Red Car. Big knee from Aimable. Goodwin looking for a fist fight. Huge shots from Goodwin. A big knee! Aimable looking for the takedown! Oh my oh god! He picked him up this and is back again! Final 10 seconds! Goodwin looking to pounce! Misses the elbow! Surely it's all over! Oh my god! What a fight! <laughs> <laughs> it was always going to be good. Just pounded though. We didn't know. Now we know. God, the last what half a round of that fight. That's what we came for. That was unbelievable. Back and forth. He goes to take him down. He gets back up. He, he throws some strikes. He gets taken down. He gets back up. Insane. Wow. Let's uh, take a look now at some of the action. Big right hand from Aimable that time. And he looked to have Perry Goodwin hurt. I don't know how you score this. This is, this is a tough, I would not want to be a judge right now. Goodwin there firing back with a big right hand, but it gets dumped to the mat with a huge takedown. Where, where he's got the power to be hitting these massive takedowns in the third round is incredible. Aimable with a knee, Goodwin taking it on the chin and just barreling into his man with big wide hooks. Absolute scenes here in Manchester. Fantastic fight. Steve Aimable, Perry Goodwin. Gentlemen, take a bow. That was a phenomenal way to cap off our prelims here at Cage Warriors 113. Are you not entertained, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen? Are you not entertained? Well, the judges have tallied their scorecards. We will throw this one to our MC. Mr. Hal Chaplin for the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after three fantastic rounds of mixed martial arts action, we go to our judges' scorecards. All three judges scored this bout 29-28 in favor of your winner.
Nevada by way of unanimous decision. In the blue corner, Harry, the Predator, Goodwin. Harry Goodwin takes the victory. Could have, I didn't have a clue, you didn't have a clue. Could have got either way. Fight. Perry Goodwin moves to 10 and 7, his 10th professional victory, wants to remember, but let's not take anything away from Steve Amable here, that was a phenomenal performance. Absolutely, uh, especially that last round, uh, the timing of those takedowns, you know, Perry just did a great job.